Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to this webinar. Today I want to show you the news from the Milestone 12. Shortly from my side, my name is Michael Wendel. I'm an ANSI trainer for programming at Heidenheim Train Right. So, Milestone 12. So we always talk about the Milestone 12 um, or about milestones at Heidenheim because we have different controls under this milestone. So the TNC 640, the TNC 620, TNC 320 and the TNC 128. And the milestone 12 is for every control a different software version. So you see for this uh, 640 it's software 8, 620 it's a software 5, also for the 320 and for the 128 it's a software 6. So we talk about the milestones. The milestones is then a special software for every control. The all the things what I show you now is um, available at the 640. So with the latest software version, software 8, all these functions all are available. All the other functions you find in our options catalog. There you can see which function is available or also in the user manual. There you can see which function is available with which software version. So last year uh, or two years ago, um, 2016, there was the software 7. There we did a lot of things to um, regarding the ITNC. And now since October 2017, the software 8 is available, the milestone 12. Um, and there inside there are different things. So the global program settings, the tool orientated machining and new functions like a facing hat or the batch process manager. And we want now to take a deeper look at these functions. And I want to show you how you can use this on your control. So here we have a detailed overview um, about, about the contents of the presentation here. So there are many points inside and we just want to start now with the presentation. So a very important function for us is the global settings um, function. So the global settings, um, this is a um, often used function from the automotive producer. So um, the big mold and die producers because they have um, big molds and on this molds they want to do changings on the program. For example, on a car, the um, left mirror is the same like the right mirror. And if you mill one mirror, then you can easily just with the function mirroring, you can mirror it on the other side to get the same mirror on the other side. And the same you need to do for every um, door of the car or the left side of the car must be the same like the right side of the car. And for this, they don't want to change the NC program. They want to have a different mask over the NC program just to change this behavior of the program. And for this, they can use the global program settings. So you can use this global program settings in program run um, operation mode. And in this operation mode, you can then activate the mirroring, the shifting, the datum shift, and the, pro the complete program will run through without any changes of the program, but the behavior of the program changed. So you can say, okay, just with one click mirroring with X, you can just mirror the program from the left side to the right side. And that's a very good function because you do not need to change the values in the ANSI program. And also a very important function here is the hand wheel superimposition. Um, in this big mold and die machines, they often have the um, round axis, so all the round axis in the hat. And they make an inclined machining and then they want to go closer to the part or um, far away from the part with the virtual tool axis. 
So this is not the set axis of the machine. This is the tool axis, what we get when we watch at the, um, ha at the picture of the hat. So the tool axis, the virtual tool axis is always perpendicular to the, or is always um, regarding the inclined angle here. And this is a very um, important function for um, from the global program settings and a lot of um, mold and die builder need this function. So this is the option 44 global program settings which are now also available on TNC 640. In the first step we did not develop all the functions. So some functions from the ITNC 530 um, are not so often used here. For example, the switch and lock access. So that the customers, they don't use it so often. So in the first step, we did not develop it. So if there is a request after this um, possibilities, then in the second step, we can develop it also here. And also the limit plane was a not often used function. So we did not develop it in the first step. The next tool, a very interesting function, um, is the CAD import. Um, before we always had the DXF import, so we need a DXF file and with the DXF file we can import the contours or positions out of a DXF file. But the problem with the DXF is that we need um, from the constructor, he, he needs to bring out in the CAD program a good DXF file. So for every tilted surface, I need a own view in the DXF file. Now we did the next step. Now we can open the step or IGES file and inside of the step and IGES file, we can select the um, orientation of the surface and on this surface, we can select the contour and we can also select the positions in the tilted system. And that's a very good thing to do a programming with a 3D model directly on the control. In a short video, I can show you how, it's, how it is working. So at first we choose a step or IGES file for example, the step file here. So the control, open it, and we see the file of our 3D model. Okay, so we can rotate it a little bit. The datum is already in the middle of the workpiece. We can also change this datum, but for us it's okay. So next step, we just take the tilted surface with three points. The first and the second point is the X plus and the third point is the Y plus axis. So now we have the tilted surface. And the next step we can collect the orientation of the tilted surface here just with two mouse clicks. And when we save this selection then we get the tilting together with the datum shift to the point which I selected and also the contour in the tilted surface. So you see the commands here, plane reset stay, we can activate it with the soft key remove the comment and trans datum axis for the datum shift and plane vector for the tilting. And so you have the possibility to program a um, 3 plus 2 axis machining together with the 3D model directly on the control with the CAD import.
Next step is the batch process manager. Um, this is the option 154. So the batch process manager is um, a possibility to plan the machinings for a manless night shift, for example. So what we are doing with the batch process manager, we are working together with the pallets. So you put in pallets. On the pallets, there are NC programs. And the NC programs are um, the control scans the NC programs. So um, the control checks if there are any error messages in the program. Is there uh, enough driving space? Because together with the NC programs, we also define a preset on which preset the um, NC program should work. And um, also the control checks if there is um, enough lifetime for the tool, if the tool is a mail, uh, um, available, um, if there are any error messages regarding the programming. And with this batch process manager, we can plan the complete night shift, for example, and we also get a feedback when the machining will finish. So, for example, the machining, um, the plan will finish at five o'clock in the morning. So I can do another program with one and um, one hour or two hours, um, just to bring the machine to the complete running time um, over the complete night shift. Also, if I work with um, related tools, um, I can check if there is enough cutting time for the machining. And that's a very good function to plan the, um, the machining process when I have a manless shift, for example. Also a good function to um, get a better machining time is the tool orientated machining. So if I have the same workpiece in the machine and I want to do the same workpiece on different machining posi positions on different presets, then I can just connect them with tool orientated machining. The benefit is here that I can save a lot of tool changes because of the connection of the tool orientated machining. Um, the control saves tool changes because with, um, if I have four work pieces, I just with the tool number one, I make all the four work pieces. With the tool number two, again, all the work pieces. And this saves a lot of time here. For a mill turn machine, you always need a special. Uh, or for mill turn machining, you often need a special mill turn machine because you need a um, special um, table axis which can do a lot of um, um, RPM for the um, mill turn machining. Um, a different thing is a um, facing head. So with a facing head, I can use the spindle speed of the milling spindle and in the um, facing head, there is a um, parallel axis and with this parallel axis we can also do now mill turn operations and for this I don't need a mill turn machine. I need the mill turn option, the option 50, but I do not need the mill turn machine. And this is a very good possibility to get a um, fast turning surface also on the milling machine. So, facing head looks like this. So we see an um, example program. At first some preparation. So we can use the facing head also on a tilted surface. So on this machine example, the facing head axis is the U axis, a parallel axis to X. And you see the machine um, the spindle will do the turning, so the spindle speed is for my cutting speed. And by movement of the z-axis and the u-axis, I get the turning contour. 
and I can use all the turning cycles. I can use the blank form update. Um, I can use um, back cuts and everything. I just program a simple turning operation and for the machine it's just interesting okay I have a facing head inside so I need to do the turning contour with the facing head and that's a very good opportunity to program this and you can also simulate this um, facing head operation and that's a very good thing to get a new um, machining process also on the milling machine A new cycle for kinematics op is the um, cycle 453. It's the grid measurement. Um, for this um, cycle, you define the um, positions where you want to measure the kinematic in an KCO kinematic compensation table. So in this kinematic compensation table you define the values or the points um, on which the machine should be measured. So normally these are 50 till 60 points and the control just drives to the point and with this inclined angle for example for an A angle of 30 degrees and a C angle of 40 degrees there the ball is measured. So the touch probe measures the ball, the middle of the ball and there is a um, deviation of x, y and that. And this deviation is saved in the table. So we can use this deviation just to get a better feedback of the tool center point in the machine. So this is a special um, kinematics opt cycle. Um, it was a um, request from the big machine tool builders um, with, um, um, with all the round axes in the hat. And for this machines, we can then get a better accuracy for the machining process. Also available are now uh, the counter. So in the special functions, program functions, we have the function count. And with this function count, we can um, just count the work pieces, um, count by one. Um, we can also set a target. We can repeat the label um, until we reach the target. And this is a very easy way to count the work pieces. We can also use the um, actual um, value of the counter. We can use it and we can see it in the mode menu. We can use it from PLC. We can also get the information from the DNC um, data access. And we can also use it in this engraving cycle 224 with the commands um, percent count one for, um, for one position and count nine for nine positions. So for example, if you program per percent count three and the value of the counter is five work pieces, then you get the result 005. And that's just how many positions you want to have for the counter. Also new from the um, cycles for our stud cycles, the cycle 256, the rectangular stud, there we have now the corner function. So we can decide now if at the corner there should be a radius or a chamfer. We decide this with plus or minus. And also for all the um, rectangular stud cycles we have now the machining operation. So the machining operation is the Q215 where we can define um, if I want to do roughing and finishing with the same tool, only roughing or only finishing. Also, the new um, a new um, function inside of the cycle 208. Um, this is the bore milling cycle. Um, inside of the bore milling cycle, I define the um, nominal diameter and the roughing diameter. And if there is a difference between the nominal diameter and the roughing diameter, which is bigger than the radius of the tool, then I get an error message that the parameters are not working together. 
So since software 8, I don't get the error message. The control will automatically put in more steps to, so more side steps to clean out or to rough out this diameter here. So some points, um, uh, overview here. So the old undocumented cycle, so the cycle one, two, three, um, they are now not longer available on the control. So you cannot program a new, um, you cannot make a new program with a cycle one. So if you have an old program with a cycle one, you can use this cycle one, but the old cycles are no longer supported by um, the syntax. But the old cycles, if there is something in the program, you can still use the old cycles. And you can also edit the old cycles if they are in the program. The cycle 241, the, um, the drilling cycle, there we have a new parameter for the starting deep. Uh, we also have new parameters in the cycle 25 for the residual material machining. There we will also do later an example on the programming station. Um, also the new cycle, uh, the cycle 276, the 3D contour train is also available now. So now we are compatible here with the ITNC 530. The fast probing cycle, the cycle 441 is also available now with software 8. So with this cycle we can change the behavior of the touch probe in the program. So if I have a program with a lot of um, in-process measurements, then I can use the cycle 444 to change from the normal um, positioning speed to the maximum speed of the machine here. And also we can now define with the config preset setting restriction that I am um, that the end user is not possible to set a datum in a round axis. It's very important if you have a round axis, um, and on this round axis there is another round axis, or the round axis um, will just position the tool, then you are not allowed to set a datum and after this to do a five axis machining. And because of this, it's now possible to um, to give out and, um, and stop if you want to set a datum in a round axis. It's defined in the machine parameters on which round axis you want to not allow the preset setting. You see here the preset settings. So it's in the C CFG config preset settings. It's restrictions and there, for example, the index number four of the offset. So it's index number four of the offset. It's the A offset. For example, for a normal AC table machine, it's not allowed to set a datum in the A axis if you want to do afterwards plain spatial or plain functions or CCPM functions. Also a new parameter is for inclined machining for a machine with three rotary axes. So you can activate in the machine parameter the parx comp to display and then you can use the, um, the third round axis also for tilted machining. So for example you can decide with the M138 you can decide if you want to do um, with which round axis you want to work. For example here the A and B then I can work with plain spatial just to use the A and B axis to make my tilting. And on the next step I want to use now the C axis to come to the next side. And that was not possible in the past. Now we can with Parax Comp display we can use the tilting, the tilted angle of the tool and only by working with the C axis we can just use the inclined angle for calculation also with C here. And that's a possibility, especially if you, if you have a um, six axis machine and you want to use the angle from the other side that you can make the good 
result here. Also new for the turning cycles, so we have um, a dwell time in the spindle revolution for the rechassing cycles and we also, um, when we use cycle 800 and eccentric turning, um, the spindle speed is limited and also when the coupling is raised, this will be undone. So normally if you program cycle 800 with eccentric turning, the spindle speed automatically will go down regarding how much um, eccentric you have. And after the, um, when the spindle coupling is open, then you need to do a new um, S-Max to bring the maximum spindle speed again on the highest way. And with software 8, this is now automatically done by the control. So if you unlock um, the eccenter turning, so if eccenter turning is over, then you have again complete spindle speed available. Also new function from TCPM, so we have a new TCPM parameter, it's the ref point. This is um, especially for turning tools in the first way. Um, and there the interesting thing is the middle picture here, so the tip and center. So the tool is measured on the tip, so on this point here, and the TCPM, so the simultaneous turning, goes around the center of the cutting plate. And this is very important for simultaneous turning. And for this, this function, so you measure your tool as a normal um, tool orientation one, with the ZL here and the XL here, with a normal cutting radius. And then you just activate with TCPM the tip center, and then you get the good example what you want to have in the simultaneous turning. Also possible for milling. For milling the interesting thing is the center center. So the tool is measured on the tool tip and the control just calculates it by herself in the center and also moves around the center. So the output, the program output is for center but the, um, the tool is measured at the tool tip and the value, the difference between the tool tip and the center will be automatically done by the control. So this you can also use for your CAM programs, for example, for simultaneous machining. So that was the short presentation and now we go to the programming station and we just take a look at the new functions directly on the programming station. So the first thing what we want to, sh to make a look at is the CAD viewer. So in the CAD viewer we just open our workpiece. You see it's a special holder and on this special holder we want to do now the pockets here on the side on this side and also on the other side here this pocket so for this we need to put the datum on the top surface here so we activate set datum here then we click on the circle and the coordinate system comes on this circle here. The next step I activate the tilting so select the tilting surface and now I need three mouse clicks. The first click is for the position of the coordinate system the second click is the X plus and the third mouse click is for the Y plus orientation. And now you see the coordinate system is on the surface and I can now select the contour. Okay, perpendicular to the surface and 
with two mouse clicks I can easily select the contour. Save it, for example in Tilt Pocket 3 and save. Replace. So, I can do the same on the other side. So, I reset the contour and I do the same on the other side. So, first click, second click, always we need the point and the third click for the y-axis. So, the y-axis must not be perpendicular. So the control always hold the X plus orientation. So if I select this as a Y, then you see the Y axis stays perpendicular to this line here. So save again, tilted pocket four and replace. So We can not only choose the um, contour, we can also choose the, the tilting. Uh, at first we need to take the contour here, one and two and three and activate the contour and with two mouse clicks we can easily take the contour and save it in tilted pocket 4. So the next step we want to do the drilling positions of this two drillings here this and this so we are also using the middle point here for X and for Y and then we can activate positions and I can just take this position and this position. So I want to have this two positions here. This value here and this value just that the values are on the same surface like the coordinate system because by, um, if you use position it also will take the set coordinate and I want to have the starting surface on this position here and save as position 1 and replace it. So now we have the contours and in the next step, we can now go into the program and start to use the contours here. So here we have the pocket number three. Okay. And the pocket number four. And also for the bore milling we need our positions here so contour and point machining select pattern file go to our folder CAD viewer and position so but we only we do not need only the um, the contour we also need the orientation so, for example, the pocket number three, there we also need the tilting. So, I just put it out of here. So, I activate or bring in my tool and now I want to have the orientation for this pocket. So, I come back to my CAD model. So, this is just with the F12 key 
or with the two arrows in the circle to change or to go from machining to programming for example so next step I want to have the orientation of this surface here so the first click and the second click and the third click okay and now I can say copy it to clipboard and come back to the program and insert it here insert block and now you see what the control is doing the plane reset stay the trans datum access to the point where I selected the first point which I selected and then the plane spatial regarding my values here I only do a little changing so I want to do it without move back maximum. I want to use a label with a safe position. So I just program call label um, 100. It's my safe position with M91. Um, and now we can see what the control is doing. So the outside contour I already selected and just program it with a contour train. And you can see the benefit of the CAD import. We can easily program such a workpiece together with the for outside contour, for example. We can use the cycle 25, the contour train cycle. And when we have a pocket, we can use the SL cycle with cycle 20 and also 22 for roughing. Okay. Next step we talk about the cycle 25. So cycle 25 I want to make a contour looking like this. Close the holder and open this. So I want to machine a contour like this. So you see um, I want to make the outside contour and there are short radius inside. So it's a radius of 5.5 um, millimeters here inside. And I want to machine this at first with a big tool and then with a smaller tool just to bring out the residual material here. So for this we just start to select the contour. So activate contour and then we start at this point here and from this point I select the contour and close the contour. So complete contour and save it to the program contour okay so the contour program is looking like this we can show program and graphic and start so you can see here the complete contour we bring it in the program with the function select contour. With the select contour, we can say here, okay, our program should be this one here. Okay, and then we start with a um, torus bill diameter 48 and with the cycle. 25 with an allowance for side of 0 0.2 millimeters. In the next step, we bring in a diameter 10 miller 
and we do the same contour train cycle but now we tell the control we had already machined the contour with the roughing tool with the name middle diameter 48 and also important here the distance so it should be 10 millimeters so just the first machining um, area then the second and then the third we will see it later um, in the test and mill diameter 10 is then finishing so without allowance for side we just want to finish the contour so in program run it's looking like this so we start with the outside machining and then we machine the Resudal material, so the nice hearts here. And with the um, connection, connection, connection distance, I can decide if I want to make at first the, to finish the first area and then go to the second area and then come to the third area. So when I now make a higher connection distance, so it's here. So for example 70, uh, 70 was not enough. Uh, 70 would be enough, but it must be in the correct cycle and now you see what happens all the three areas will be machined together and that's the advantage of the cycle um, 25 with the residual material that we can easily machine the areas where the big tool will not come inside with the cycle 25 with the contour train. Next topic is the batch process manager. So we have here a um, palette file and on this palette file we have three palettes and on every palette we have an own NC program. I now open the batch process manager and I also open my file so and now you see what happens the control calculates the machining time so for every program I get the machining time and when I will stop machining with this machining time so with this three pallets I will stop machining at 10.43 and you see the preset is ok so there are no um, limit switch error messages with this preset for example preset number 3 for this workpiece and 2 for this workpiece and also the program is ok so there are no error messages inside of the program so when I now load this program in the program run so this palette in the program run then the batch process manager will do something else he will now check the tool if the tools are available if there is enough lifetime for the tools and we can see for the first two programs everything is okay but on the third programs there is a, a mistake there is an X something is not working here because we see the tool drill D6 is an external tool. So this tool is not available in the pallet, uh, not in the pallet, in the um, pocket um, table. So we can go to manual mode, tool table, take a look. Where is the drill D6? It's here. That's 228. 
So we just go to pocket table and insert the 228. So 228. Okay. Now it's inside of the pocket table. So inside of the machine, of the magazine. And now we go back to the patch process manager and now we can see, okay, everything will run through until 10.45. So if I now push NC start, the machine will machine all the work pieces and will finish in one hour 10.45. And this is a very good thing to plan the processes. So for example, I want to make another palette. So insert, insert after, palette. So the palette important must be machine able. And insert, insert after, I want to insert an NC program. The program should be our um, program from before with the cycle 24 or 25 so program okay and the preset should be the preset number four okay and we see again oh our use tool the torus mill diameter 48 is an external tool so i need to bring this again in the machine otherwise my plan will not run through automatically so this is the advantage of the batch process manager just to plan all the machining processes overnight, for example, or for a manless shift. The next step also together with tool orientated machining is um, or with palette is the tool orientated machining. So if you have a palette file then you have also the columns workpiece status a method and CTID. So if you have the software 8 and these columns are not available, then go to mode, then 555343 and more functions, the soft key more functions and edit format. Then you can activate it in this view, you can activate the columns here. Just click the remove, let the X is away, and then you can activate this columns. So, what is the tool orientated machining doing? So we have an NC program. The NC program is looking like this. The program 4. So you see two tilted surfaces with a drilling inside. And I want to make four work pieces with this um, program. So I just put in here my palette. So program four, program four, and the preset 10 and 11. And these two work pieces are blank and they are tool orientated and CTO combined tool orientated so connected with the workpiece over it so the line number one and two are connected so these two workpieces will be machined together the WPO is workpiece orientated so this will be um, machined after the f um, finished line number one and two and this is the reset program after the machining here so I just changed the machine machine settings kinematics to be had C table okay and now you see my two work pieces they are on a clamping pyramid the first workpiece and the second workpiece. And in the preset management, I have here the workpiece number one with X, Y, and Z um, datum and the SPA and the SPC 
29 and 29 and C 180 for the second workpiece. So just the um, how the workpiece is in the machine, I can fix the alignment here um, with the 3D basic rotation. And this is just the um, line number 10 and 11 in the preset table with the SPA and SPC angle inside. So I can activate the machining here. So, and we start here with the machining. So, first workpiece, automatically tilting here, and we machine the first tilted surface on the preset number 10, the second surface on the preset number 10, and then we go with the same tool to the preset number 11, we see it here, change the preset and do the same machining on the second side. And this is a very good function to save tool changes because normally the control will finish the first workpiece with all the tool changes and then go on with the second workpiece and again um, do all the tool calls for the second workpiece. And this takes a lot of time. So we can save the machining time here. Also for the drilling, the first and the second and also on preset 11, the first and the second. And the last program, the reset program, just to finish everything. And then we are finished here. When I press edit palette in the program run and I say edit on, I can reset again the workpiece status to blank and then I can machine the workpieces again. So the last point what we are talking about is the possibility of the program test. So inside of the program test I have now the possibility to do also a collision monitoring. So with F11. F11. So the three errors in the circle, I can activate program and graphic like this, or I can activate program and kinematics, and then I get the kinematic view. And I can just simulate my program, different values, and I see, oh, something is wrong, it will become red. So that's just a pre-warning here, and I see, oh, collision detected. So in the next step will be now a collision. So when I now say switch off the collision monitoring, I can check if there is something wrong. And we can see it was too fast. can see that there will happen really a collision also. So here we get the collision that the hat will reach the table and that would damage the machine here. So you see here this would be the collisioning and just to provide this we can use the DCM in the program test.
just to react faster on a possible collision. Okay, that's all from my side. I hope you could, you could enjoy the webinar. If you have questions, do not hesitate to contact us. The easiest way is always send an email to 3103 at heidenhain.de. Thank you very much and bye-bye.